Okay, we're the salaried community dental service. We don't provide dentistry to people who can access general dental practice. We only provide dentistry to people with special needs, and that can be anything from learning disabilities to terminally ill, anything that would prevent you from going into a general dental practice. So simple dentistry on complex patients. Um, we, um, when the first inspection turned up CQC, we were told we required improvement, like a lot of people. And we have gone to outstanding in the eyes of the CQC. I say that because I'm not sure how everybody felt about their first inspection. Anyway, uh, during that period, we had some transformation. We were asked to look at our sit, but we took an opportunity to just go, do you know if we're going to do a sit, we're not going to mess around the edges, we're going to really go for it. So we looked at our workforce and we looked at how they were working together. We did that thing that Roy was talking about, we just looked at the staff. We knew what our patients were like, they weren't going to change. We went through service transformation in 2015. Um, the showcase that we did today was based on develop, innovate, grow. And what we realised as part of our transformation is that we had a workforce that wasn't fully utilised. We had dentists, we had dental therapists, dental nurses, a big admin team. We, we had a lot of people there. But, really rather poorly, some of our key performance indicators were really poor. We were a bit low on morale as well. So we were referral to treatment time. Up to 50% of the patients were waiting, waiting over 18 weeks. And we are measured on it. Fluoride application, which is the thing you apply to people's teeth to prevent them getting tooth decay, we're meant to be doing it today for 30%, 10% or less we're getting it. Why? We had a workforce that were able to do it. We asked questions of our staff. Why were some people not, not, when we looked at their chair occupancy, why are they so low? Some of them felt scared. They felt scared by the patients they were seeing. They felt scared by the medical complications. Well, that was a message to us. We needed to change it, as uncomfortable as that was. And we had some great, great, highly qualified dental nurses. So we needed to change things and we needed to utilise them to help make the difference. We also needed to stop working in silos. Somebody in charge of audit, somebody in charge of a bit of training, everybody needed to own those bits. So, so we moved from development, we knew we had to innovate, we knew we had to make changes. As Deborah said, our patients weren't going to change. And some of our patients are those patients with a lot of tooth decay. Very, very young, we knew that was an increasing number, and, and sadly we see it with younger children. So we knew that we had to increase these fluoride rates. So with the innovation with our newly extended dental nurses, was you can see the fluoride level now, some months is up to 50%, which is a tremendous amount. So that's, that's children that are having preventive work done on their teeth, which is going to prevent them needing those teeth out. So that was something that we, we really had to focus on. Empowering staff, they had time to look at training. Was the training right? Did it help them? Was it good quality training? And as a service, we looked to see what, what training we needed as a team. Audits are complicated, they can be very difficult, but an audit can tell you where you need to focus, where you need to work harder. Um, we also looked at time to, as a team to be together, so we used our away days as times to look at the structure of our service, how we can transform. And when we are empowering staff, and Roy was talking today about having new ideas, that's something that we try and bring up at every away day, is what can we do different, what can we do better. So that's where we move to. So I'll move on to Sarah. We used a lot of our come on to grow. So in terms of the develop, innovate, we now want to grow the service. Um, as Deborah said, we've got some very skilled people in the service and that's not necessarily about technical ability, that's also about that holistic approach. We treat patients that can be challenging, they may have mental health issues, they may have learning disabilities, we have a lot of children that come to see us who don't necessarily cooperate with a dentist on the high street. So we knew we had to start looking at the way that we would grow our staff to ensure that if we have new 
staff coming in, they train to do that side of things, not just the technical part of the job. So we're now looking at um, specifically our dentists. We've got two clinical fellows at post at the moment who are dentists and they've come to us to get gain more experience in special care. We hope in the future that people like that will remain with us. Along with that, we're fingers crossed we've got some funding to have two specialist registrar posts and they will be specifically to look at um, training pathways dealing with patients that are accessing dentistry under that special care umbrella. We've also got some of our dentists looking at an MSc in paediatric dentistry to help with that. And in terms of our dental nurses looking at those extended duties, we're looking at the whole pathway at the moment so that we can try and grow our staff within. We've got a really good example in our service at the moment who years ago started with us as a trainee dental nurse. As part of our transformation, she is now one of our extended duties dental nurses. And not only is that given her what it looks like on the paper, which is promotion, but it's also given her masses of confidence. She holds her own caseload and she's probably one of our real success stories through this transformation. It did mean that our workforce changed. We now don't hold as many separate staff groups within dentistry as we did pre-transformation. However, our figures now indicate that the innovation that we've done and the way that we're now trying to grow that is working for us and has been successful. In terms of the trust, we're meeting all our KPIs at the moment and we've gone from requires improvement at CQC to outstanding this year. Had it not worked, I think we'd have been a different matter, but they feel this benefit to as much as they didn't like seeing their colleagues leave and they didn't, and that was very upsetting. They are, I would say, 95% of the staff are like, I'm really glad it happened.